Hey girl, hey! I am super excited to be filming this video because I got a tripod <laughs> and I love it! Anyways, that's not the point of this video. <laughs> okay, let's start over then. Let's say hey, how are you? I'm doing good, I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. I hope you're doing well. If not, I'm praying for you. God's got you. Anyways, this week's video is another things I used to think. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about I feel like just the space that we all want to exist in, it's so popular, it's such a buzz little niche category of existence and I think everyone is really focused on it right now and that is moving up, progressing in the world, like bettering yourself, learning, growing, inspiration, confidence. Basically we're going to be discussing self, society, success and a lot of the misconceptions I had behind it and some of the major reasons that I think people fall behind or give up or concede to fear when they are trying to change their lives is because they lack knowledge about it and and or they decide to just subscribe to the mainstream ideas, which honestly is never really a good idea. There are very rare occasions where it is a good idea, but 98% of the time, stay away from what's coming out of most people's mouths. So. Let's get into it, shall we? Okay, the first misconception about growing, changing, becoming the best version of myself, blah, 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 blah. All of things which are biblical, if you didn't know. Um, but the first misconception I had about it is that I had to change to be enough. And I think that most people think this, and technically it is true, but the, the way that the world makes it seem we have to change is by completely taking apart every part of who you are and discarding everything from your childhood, you know, what you like, who made you to sus subscribe to like the mainstream ideas, have the same opinions, have the same beliefs, wear the same clothes, drink the same drinks, you know what I'm saying? And that is not the biblical idea of change. The biblical idea of change is actually shedding the skin that produced that mindset. And I think what a lot of people don't understand is that they see people who have money, who have cars, they have financial freedom, they can do whatever they want, and that is a level of success, but they assume that that means everything is great and well with their lives, and so they do what they see everybody else doing. When in my experience, what I have learned is like 10 times out of 10, nobody that has subscribed to the mainstream ideals is really happy with who they are and or their lives because they've just come, become cheap copies of one person that made it. You know what I'm saying? That decided I want to, I want everyone to look like me or I want it to be about me, 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 you know? So let me wrap this all up and make sure my point is clear for you by saying you do have to change to succeed and grow, but not to be enough. You were deemed enough before God formed you and put you in your mom's womb. If you subscribe to the mainstream ideas, you are playing into people pleasing and people pleasing is a lie. Like you are a deceiver if you people please and I'm not coming at anybody if I'm not coming at myself because I used to people please. Like I think that it's so easy and it seems like the right thing but if you do what everybody likes you're telling every single person a lie because you told this person you like chocolate ice cream, you told that person you like vanilla, you told that person you like strawberry, and they all equally think that, oh, this is their favorite, and now they have three different versions of you. Each person has three different versions of you that exist in their head based off you telling them that you like this said thing or it's your favorite thing, and you really don't like any of those flavors. You like mint chocolate chip. You know what I'm saying? So now you've created a reality in somebody's head that whether it's something as small as what kind of ice cream flavor you like or the kind of beliefs you have, if that reality gets destroyed by the truth, you have, you have destroyed a part of that person because they founded their reality on the belief that that was truth. So I really don't think people understand how manipulative and selfish and conceited people pleasing is like they think it's a good idea because it works out for them in the end but in reality you lose yourself you don't gain any friends because people are gonna figure you out like the lie's gonna topple on itself at some point and then you don't even get where you want to go 
like once you get there, you just want to die because you've sold yourself and there's nothing left of you. So I think what I have extremely appreciated about God and the way that he does things is that he never made me seem or the way that God does his process is not like you're not worthy. You have to do something in order to be worthy for me. He's like, hey, you're worthy. Now let's make sure you start acting like it. Let me get your heart so you can change the way you think, change the way you act, change the way you process things so that you can present like you're worthy because you obviously didn't know and that's why you were presenting otherwise. So huge deal, I think you do have to change but you don't have to conform. And people think changing is conformity. Like I'll do whatever to get the deal. Let me just schmooze and mm, 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 mm. No, 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 no. Because you were fearfully and wonderfully made by God, whether you know it or believe it. So you doing what everybody else does is an insult to him and to you. And it's often too late before people realize that they have deprecated themselves by gaining, you know, 50 million followers, a Ferrari, a yacht, a house in Venice, Italy, and all these things that they're like, I'm still not enough. At this point, I've changed and I've done all of this. I believed the lie that I had to change. I had to conform to be enough and I'm still not enough because you never will be unless you give your heart to Jesus. Okay, let's move on. Okay. One more thing I just wanna say on that, confidence comes with knowing who you are. And when you know whose you are, and that is God, and God knows who you are, he will tell you. And so you can develop that confidence to know that no matter how much you change, you have always been enough because you're not going to be the same from season to season at all, especially if you're early in your faith. Um, you're not going to be the same at all. If you're early, middle, late in your faith, it doesn't really matter. But the confidence that he gives you and the trust established with him when you have relationship with him is knowing that you have always been the same in his eyes. You've always been perfect, matchless, righteous, magnificent, beautiful. And so when you change, you're only doing it to get more and more like his image. Like that is the process of sanctification, the proving of your salvation. But it doesn't come at a price that is not well, well, well under the paying price. Like you sacrifice your opinion or you sacrifice your belief system and you gain endless joy, peace that nobody can steal, freedom, all these things. And then he's like, oh, here's some money. There you go. You know, like, anyway, let's move on now. Okay, I kind of went over a lot of the backing for this next point in my first one, vaguely. So I'm not gonna talk about it a lot. But the next thing that I used to think is that conforming would lead to acceptance. And that's not the truth, point blank period. Like, when you conform, it's just an endless cycle of meeting societal and personal expectations that have no regard for your soul health, your mental health, what they just, they want what they want and it's at the expense of who you are. So as long as you commit to conforming, you might as well commit to writing on your gravestone she was the greatest conformer of all time. She conformed so much that she forgot who she was and died at the age of 20 because she lost herself. Something I want to clarify here because I got so animated talking about this because it really hypes me up is that you can die spiritually and physically because you conform. And I think the most prevalent example of this for someone who is watching this video is that you die internally. You lose yourself, you lose your spirit, your hope, your spark, whatever you want to call it. Knowing what I just said, that I used to think that conforming would lead to acceptance, I want to ask you a question. And that question is, do you think or have you ever thought that you would never fit in? Or were you ever watching the crowd from the inside out, feeling like it was impenetrable? Because same, I have felt like that my entire life. Like, I would say that I... The way that I recognize that sort of situation is not the same anymore, so I don't have that same feeling, but I am not unaware when I'm in those situations of like, I used to feel like this, you know what I'm saying? Um, but the point I'm trying to make is, yes, I felt that way too, and I think that it is completely intentional, and it is a universal experience prompted and crafted by the Holy Spirit to remind us or warn us like, A, hey hello hey like it looks like you want that but trust me you really don't want that and 
I always felt so strongly. Whenever I had that feeling, I felt it so strongly. Like I would never be one of them. Like the people around me, the popular kids. And like in terms of school and social cliques and stuff like that, I never was popular. But it was like this weird deeper rooted sensation that I was never meant to be a part of that and I didn't feel rejected by that and so now looking back I can totally tell that that was God but I didn't know at the time I just would think about that and move on because I was like I just, like it doesn't matter and so I think when we think about conforming and gaining acceptance and doing what the flesh wants what the heart wants and even part of what the soul wants which is to gain acceptance we have as humans created a society that bases acceptance off of all the wrong things like money um sta marital status like the acquisition of material things the way you look the clothes that you wear like all of those things and i want to read to you the scripture it's romans 12 2 um, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. And so I think what we need to understand when we have that feeling either to um, conform and find acceptance or that we will never be accepted. And like, I don't even know if I could ever be one of these people because it's such a like big fat thing of things that people do to conform and it really is like it's a large network of just so many costly decisions to who you are that people make to be accepted but that's not the point so when we think about that what i want you to remember is that you will never be accepted for being one of them because there's eight billion of them do you know what i'm saying but you will always be accepted if you accept yourself and I think the biblical root of this scripture or the principle coming from this scripture is reminding us that the way to success, the way to the heart of the Lord, the way to be accepted is to reject the world, is to reject what they present to you. And I want you to take this with a grain of salt because I'm not saying reject water, reject food, like don't reject, we need that. That's a human thing. Reject the ways that the world does life for the most part. You know what I'm talking about. Use common sense. Reject the ways that make you conform because that is no way to gain anything. That is the only way to lose things. And so that will never, and I mean literally ever, lead to confidence, lead to success, lead to inspiration. Although it may look like it on the outside. Although you may have been in five or six movies. Although you may have made eight million, eight billion dollars. Although you may have 12, 14, 15 houses, although you may have set your kids up for five or six generations, you won't have gained anything. I promise you. Okay, this one's low-key short and sweet. The last one that I have for this things I used to think is that I used to think inspiration came from strong and poignant feelings. And I think that we low-key all start at that point where we see something that is great, whether it's in a movie, on a sports um, field, or gym, or arena, or wherever it is for you, on a runway of a fashion show, on, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. Wherever it is for you that you feel those strong feelings and see something that you wanna be, I do think that that is a pure, intentional very real moment that you see those things and you are inspired by them but inspiration is not sustained by feelings it's not sustained by um you know captivating motion pictures and all it's not cap nah 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 true inspiration comes from the truth and i think that's why it is so hard or so few, we find so few and far in between 
people and sources that actually can produce something that is inspiring because they are just evolving content that has been created before. Like think of a romance movies. All romance movies have the same format, okay? You get background on the boy, you get background on the girl, they bump into each other, they either go apart for a little bit or they start dating, everything's going great, all of a sudden, somebody does something stupid, boom, there's a big conflict. They separate, somebody makes a grand gesture, they get back together happily ever after. Basically, every romance movie ever created, at least in the United States of freaking America, has that storyline. But how many of them are inspiring? How many of them actually make you want to go and find true love? No, no, none of them. The answer is none of them. Because that's not based on truth. Or maybe it was at one point, like that was somebody's story, somebody's reality, and it inspired people for the time being. Probably like four or five or six months. And then we should have found another storyline. We should have went somewhere else to find somebody else's truth and see how they found love and create things that inspire people to pursue what is real and true. And I think that that is the problem. We don't speak truth. And that's why there are so many people that are unmotivated, that are uninspired because we keep seeing the same thing over and over and over again because that's what the algorithm wants, because it's trendy, because it makes money, because da 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 da. But nobody cares about that. Like, in, in the end, if you really were to ask yourself and be honest with yourself, you don't care about that. You care about you and what makes up your soul and what makes up who you are and what can get you to where you want, that can get you your dreams, whether you want to admit it or not. Like, point blank period so I'm gonna give you some scripture to back it up okay both of these I had to drink some water I had to pee I needed to calm down got me hype like this stuff gets me hype anyways so both scriptures are coming from the book of John both scripture clusters um this one is coming from John chapter 8 verses 31 through 32 I am reading the New Living Translations and it says Jesus said to the people who believed in him you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, I feel like, why truth is the basis for all inspiration. And it's just as Jesus said, because the truth sets you free. And when you are free, you are inspired to do things that you would have never done when you were in bondage. Because you literally, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, couldn't do them. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that's one of the best benefits of being in a relationship with God is freedom and it's unrelenting and it is it's really inexplicable what that gift does for the soul what it does for the people around you because when you live and walk in freedom which is based in which is based in truth there is nothing that you cannot do because you know that God is with you because he's given you the basis for it. So um, if you want inspiration, find truth. And the quickest place you can find truth is in the Bible and in the gospel and in the story of God's experience. And you will be set free. And you will be blown away how many things you are inspired by daily. And then remember that it's a choice. Like, choose to be inspired choose to take from what you see appreciate it and be like wow this makes me healthily like healthily this makes me want to do better for my wife this makes me want to do better for my kids for my mom you know what i'm saying i think when you have the truth those things come naturally and even when they stop coming naturally, because you will feel good about it for a certain amount of time. If you're a believer and you're taking this and you're moving with it, you will feel good about it for a certain amount of time. But when the feelings stop, you have to choose truth, which is inspiration. Okay, I had another scripture, uh, John 4, 22 to 24, but I don't think it applies as much. And I think I, think I got everything that I needed to get from the one scripture. Um, but that's it for this things I used to think. I hope you enjoyed this video. I love you much. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a great rest of your week. I am praying for you. I love you. God is for you. And yes, that's it. I will see you guys next time. Peace.